Well, just a, a tiny recap. The first week we talked about how God loves us. You know God loves you. And we got to get a revelation that God just doesn't have love, that God is love. Amen? And he loves you with an everlasting love. And we got to get that revelation. And how did God demonstrate his love to us? Through his son Jesus. Amen? And so Jesus is God's expression of his love to us. And amen. And I think about that. Love is, is you know, from God's point of view, it's giving and forgiving. Amen. God gave Jesus. He gave his only begotten son. Amen. He gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life, paid a price so that we can be forgiven. Glory to God. So that we can have a relationship with him. Isn't that awesome? So love is, somebody say, love is giving and forgiving. Amen. And I'm going to say this, that we're, we're talking about relationships this, this month. And, uh, you know, there's going to be times where we're going to be hurt in relationships and we're going to have to learn to forgive. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to say this, that a lot of times we're, we, 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 we don't want to, you know, walk the way the world walks. As Christians, we want to walk the way God walks. And in Romans 12... And two, it's, it says this. This is a New Living Translation. It says here, don't copy the behavior or the customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. So, uh, again, we don't want to copy the behaviors of the world. The world will cut you off in a heartbeat. I'm going to say the world is fickle. And, you know, they were saying, you know, they loved Jesus one day. They loved Jesus and they were worshiping him and saying Hosanna to Jesus one day. And the next day they were saying crucify him. So the world is fickle, but I'm glad we don't have fickle love. Amen. I'm glad that our love is constant and we need to stay constant in our love. So, you know, we talked about about love, uh, about God's love for us the first week, the second week which was last week, we talked about commitment. And, uh, you know, we have to learn to stay committed. And it's easy to be committed in a relationship when things are easy. Amen. You don't have to talk about commitment when things are easy. But when things are hard, that's when you have to stand on commitment. Amen. When things aren't going well, that's when you're going to have to, I like to say, suck it up. That's sometimes you just got to suck it up. Sometimes you just have to endure. You know, the Bible says if we endure till the end, we'll have eternal life. And, you know, this, this race that we're in, it's not, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And there's going to be a process in our walk with God where things aren't going right, when, when it, we're going to be tested in, in our commitment level. Has anybody ever been tested out here in their relationships? No? Don't you, some of you might raise both hands. I mean, we, are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? We, we are tested all the time. And, you know, uh, and when things aren't going well, um, that's the time where the enemy wants to get us down and depressed. Amen. You know, you know, just because you haven't seen the promise yet in your life doesn't mean that God's not working on it. You know, just because you haven't seen all your prayers answered, I'm going to say continue to stay with it. You know, I, I'm going to say just don't give up. You know, if you're going to be committed in a relationship, you know, it, it's, it's like you know, a marriage relationship. The, it, when you give your vows, it's death to your part. Amen. In other words, you, you, you stick in it through thick and thin. You continue to stay in the fight. You don't grow weary in well-doing, the Bible says. Don't grow weary. If you faint not, if you don't lose your hold, you will reap the blessing. Do you believe that? And so we don't want, we're not those that, that let go. We're those, that, we're fighters. How many fighters do we have in here? I'm a fighter. I just don't give up that easy. I don't, I don't give up at all. I'm, I'm always pressing in and pushing through. Uh, you know, I, I had a, a credit card. Well, I missed a payment on a credit card. Anybody ever done that? And uh, matter of fact, I set it up to have an automatic to come out of my credit cards because I don't like sending them out. And I don't like trying to remember anything. So I, I set it up and I, and I set it up early, but they had a 30 day wait period. So it had to be the following month. I didn't know that. So I thought it was coming out 
my next payment. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so, you know, I, I'm a fighter. Somebody say I'm a, some, look at your name and say, be a fighter. And, uh, you know, I, I know, always call these companies and I ask them for grace. I say, listen, you know, I'm never late on my payments. Uh, you know, can you give me some grace? And, 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 and the guy said, well, you're a new account and we can't do nothing for you. And I said, well, can I talk to a supervisor? See, I'm, fi I'm fighting it. I'm, 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 I, you know, it was $25, but $25, you know, it's, I, I don't like fees. It's not that I can't afford the $25. I don't want to pay the fee. And, uh, and, so, and so I just kept pressing on. They said, well, I can't, we, they said, we can't get a hold of a supervisor. We'll, we'll have a supervisor call you back. And I hung up. And then I waited about maybe 30 minutes. I called back and got, got a hold of somebody else. And I started giving them my problem again. And, but I prayed and asked God for grace and favor. And this guy, and I, and I said, I know I set it up. And this guy was much more nicer. He, I had much more favor. He said, you know what we'll do, Mr. Lambert? We'll go ahead and just take that charge off. Do you know what I'm saying? What, what did I do? I pressed through. I, 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 I just didn't give up at the first sign of opposition. And some of us, we just give up. We just throw in the towel. We just say, oh, it's, oh, man, it's just way too hard. No, listen, if you're going to win in this life, if you're going to win, you're going to have to press through some obstacles. I, you know, the Lord gave me this scripture. He says, when you've done all, stand and keep standing until you see the victory. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? We have to keep standing until we see the Daniel in 21 day fast. You know, he, he kept fasting until the angel showed up and the angel said, I came for your words, Daniel. And I'm going to say this, that listen, I'm talking about today, the, the third part of it is communication and the power of our words. And I'm telling you that our words are powerful. And we need to be speaking the right words out of our mouth. So I'm going to talk to you about communication today and how, our, how our, our words can bring us over or cause us to go under. Amen? And so there's four levels of communication. I didn't come up with this. All the experts came up with this. I just got the information here. And uh, in communication, and, uh, and, and the first uh, level of communication is, is called surface communication. This is, this is just cliches on just saying, how are you? And somebody say, I'm fine. You're not really wanting to engage with, in a person to find out about their life. Amen? You know what I'm talking about. And so th these are, that's a surface communication. Uh, sometimes I'll send a text and, uh, and, and, and say something or say something positive and somebody will send me a thumbs up. That's a surface communication. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And then there's general information. And a lot of times in our relationships and, and husbands and wives, you're just passing general information to each other. I, I'm going to go work out after, uh, after work. You, you just give general information. But, you know, you know, that's good in a relationship. But, we need, you know, we need more than just general information. We need more than just cliches. We need to go deeper in our relationships. Can I get an amen in here? And see, we want to go deeper in our relationships with God. We just don't want to, we want to have a, a, a deep relationship with God. And, and, and the next level of communication, it's called deep feelings. This is a, a need of to being transparent in our relationships uh, where we can reveal our feelings to one another. Amen? Sometimes, you, a lot of times when we're dating... Um, before we get married, we, we, we start getting a, a you know, revelation that we like that person. And pretty soon we go into that next level of telling that person that we love that person. Somebody say deep feelings here. And uh, men hate to say that they love. I'm going to say that. A woman seems to be uh, quicker in saying that. Why? I think ladies are made for relationships. Oh, it's quiet in here. It's quiet in this Methodist church. Women love relations. I don't understand it. My wife loves these romance movies. She loves the Hallmark thing. I'm saying, you're watching another Hallmark? They're so corny. You know, I look at them. But, but these ladies, they love it. They love that. And, and it's always, you know, the guy that, you know, either trying to get hooked up with a lady or a lady maybe trying to get hooked up with a guy and then 
finally, you know, they, they, they become friends, but you don't know which one. And ladies, you know what I'm talking about here. And, uh, but I don't watch these kind of movies. My wife loves them. Amen. And then, and then the, 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 next, the next level of uh, communication is, um, is, de is uh, deep needs. So, so we got deep feelings and then we got deep needs. And, and this is where, you know, you, you reveal your deepest need to, to your spouse. And you let them know what you really need in the relationship. And uh, I really think uh, the deepest need for a woman is for her to be loved. Can I get an amen here? And I, I believe one of the deepest needs for, for husbands is that um, for them to be respected. The husbands, the men want to be honored. Men want to be respected. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? I got this out of the Bible. <laughs> amen. In, in Ephesians 5.25 through 33, it's interesting to me that uh, the Apostle Paul wrote a lot uh, of letters, and he, he, he was writing to husbands, and he, he, he tells the husbands to, to love their wives. You know, you think that's a no-brainer. I mean, you're married, so it's a no-brainer for the husband to love the wife, right? But why, do, why does he say, husbands, love your wives? <laughs> because husbands can love their sports. Hello, Husbands can love their job. Amen. We're, we're, we are designed to work, right? Men are designed to work. And men can be more tied up in their work. Can, can I, are you listening to what I'm talking about? And, and, and then the relationship may not be as strong. So in Ephesians 5, 25 through 33, it says, Husbands, love your wives. And it's never written in the scriptures where wives love your husbands. There's no exhortation about wives loving. Why? Because, because, because ladies are designed for relationship. And, and when God created Adam and Eve, Eve was, was designed to be a helpmate for Adam. Amen. To, to go come alongside of him and be a blessing to, to Adam. Amen. And so it says here, and of course, you know, men, their first job is to work. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? And so... And so if you are looking for, just as a side note, if you're a single lady and you're looking for a man, make sure he has a job. <laughs> make sure he's working. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? Make sure he's, hallelujah. Amen. Don't be supporting him. Amen. And um, husbands, love your wives. And then he says, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word, that he might present to her, uh, himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. So, so he says to the husbands, you ought to love your spouse as Christ loved the church. And how did Jesus love the church? He gave his life for the church. And so we're supposed to, we're supposed to give our lives to our spouse. Amen. And then he, then he goes and he exhorts again. He says, husbands ought to love their own wives. Now he goes again. And he says, as, as their own bodies. So we're, we're supposed, husbands are supposed to love their wives as Christ loves the church. Now husbands, again, love your wife as your own body. Now he, he's kind of pressing the point again. He, and then he says here, he who loves his wife loves himself. So if you're, if you're a husband today and you're not loving your wife, you're not really loving yourself. She's an extension of, of who you are. Amen? And it says, For no one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and his flesh of his bones. For this reason, man shall leave his father and mother and join his wife, and, sh and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the Lord. Nevertheless, he he's exhorts again, let each one of you particularly so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. And I'm going to say this, uh, men, you're going to get the respect if you give the love. And some of you say, well, first she must respect me, then I give love. No, no, you got to give love, and then the 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 reciprocation will come. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? And so we need to learn to walk in love uh, towards people, towards our spouse. Amen. So, so let me just give you like four barrier, barriers of communication 
um, four things that will hinder or destroy the unity in a relationship. The number one barrier that will destroy the unity in a relationship is when, when we withdraw uh, from uh, the relationship. How do we do that? We, we withdraw by when, when we get hurt, we get defensive walls come up, and what we do is we stop communicating. Have you ever gotten hurt in a relationship and you stop communicating to the person that you're in a relationship with? In other words, you, you've, you've seen that, just talk to the hand. You heard that? Or I'm not going to speak to you anymore. In other words, it's, it's called the silent treatment. Anybody ever been in a relationship and you gave the silent treatment? Are you listening to what I'm saying today? And what it is, we're hurt, and so our walls are up, and we give a silent treatment. And, you know, I, I like what, what one person said was that when a man is quiet in a relationship, he's thinking. But when a woman is quiet in a relationship, she's mad. Ah, uh, can I get an amen or an old me? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Why? Because ladies are designed to communicate. We are, you know, ladies are designed to have conversation. Ladies, that's what they're, they're made for. They, they're, they're made to, 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 to have communication and fellowship and relationship. We're all, but, you know, men can be stuck to the TV and be watching sports all day without communicating. Amen? And so we got to get a revelation of that. And so Proverbs 18.1 says this way, A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire, and he rages against all wise judgment. Listen, we're not going to be able to bring any kind of unity in a relationship if we're cutting ourselves off from the relationship. In other words, we need, I know there's going to be times where you're going to have to have some grace and some space. You know, anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you might need, if you're upset, and you're dealing with an issue in the relationship, sometimes you might just need to back off and have some grace. I, I totally understand that, you know, before you, before you charge in, amen? And so sometimes you need that. The number two thing that happens that, that goes down the level of a barrier to communication is escalation. This is where we move into emotional, heated communication. Have you ever, um, something happened, and have you ever just lost control and yelled at, at somebody that you were in relationship with? No, not this group. Amen. Amen. So you, in other words, yell or get stern words. Amen. In other words, we, we get exasperated. Sometimes, every once in a while, I'll do that. Maybe, maybe my, my wife may call my name, and she may have been calling my name like, like all day long. And I'm, I'm like, I'm doing something, and I end up just getting frustrated. And I say, What? Has anybody ever been there? Has anybody? I, I like, oh, man, I didn't respond right. What? What do you want? Has anybody been there? Men, especially if you're watching TV. What is it? I'm focused. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Men are one-track individuals. They're, they're, they're on one thing, and they don't like to be, you know, women tend to be multitask people. They, they can operate and do a lot of different things. And women are so special, amen? God was able to, to, to do something special when he created women, amen? So sometimes we will get in that. And Proverbs 15, 18 says, A hot-tempered person starts fights, and a cool-tempered person stops them. So we need, we need to be very careful that we're not allowing. You know, I, I like what one person says. Listen, before you get upset, you might want to count ten. And some of us might want to count to a thousand. Are oh, you listening? A ten may not be long enough for some of you. I was in a men's group yesterday, and we, we had a, a men's breakfast. And I was talking to one of the guys, and they, and they got upset with one of their uh, supervisors. And they said it took them three days to cool down. Three days. That, you know, you know listen, that's way too long. Amen. In other words, yeah, because you don't need to lose. Don't allow anybody to make you lose your peace. The, the, nobody should have the right to make you lose your peace. Glory to God. I'm telling you that, that, that your peace uh, you know, belongs to you. And don't allow anybody to take that peace away from you. Amen. And then the third 
uh, barrier to communication is when we start belittling. Uh, we start making snide or mean comments towards a person uh, uh, to hurt them. And we do that out, out of hurt, amen? And, and what we do is we can even do it in a joking type way. You know what I'm talking about? We can joke around and make a snide comment and it hurts people. And we need to be, be very careful. The Bible talks about not, not you, know, you know, don't be jesting and don't be, you know, giving coarse uh, communication. Don't do those things. And, and so we need to be very careful that we're not belittling our partner. Don't, don't, don't be saying that they're stupid or dumb. Be, why? So, you know, if you're saying that, well, then, they, they, then it's going to reflect on you because they're with you. In other words, if they're stupid, they're... Okay, we will, we'll continue. Okay, we'll continue. So, so, so I like what it says in James 5, 9. Do not complain against one another, uh, believers, so that you will not be judged. Uh, for, look, the judge is standing at the door. So James is, is the book of wisdom, and James is the half-brother of Jesus, and he's saying do not complain against one another. So we're not, we're not supposed to be complaining, amen? We're, we're, not, we're not called to, 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 uh, to look at everybody's faults. We're not called to focus on people's faults. No, no, the, the Bible is a self-examination book, and it's really designed to show up any faults in us. In other words, hopefully that when we're reading the Bible, there might be areas in the Word of God that we're not lining up to, and hopefully as we read or as we're in church that the word of God will go forth and will help you know, put us on that right track. In other words, the message is going forth today and it's not just for your partner. It could be for you. Amen. Can I get an amen or oh me? And so listen, I'm going to say this. You can't make your candle brighter by putting out somebody else's candle. And then the fourth thing is if we continue on that road of a burial, barriers towards our communication relationships, it will go into false beliefs. We start believing things about a person that's not really true. Hello. And what the enemy will try to do is get us to start thinking that things aren't really true, like they're out to get you. Or are you hearing what I'm saying today? And you start getting a, you know, you start thinking, oh, that they don't really love you anymore. Or uh, you start getting, a, you know, you need to be very careful. You know, that's what happened to Eve when she, when she was deceived by the serpent. You know, the serpent came to Eve and said, did God say that you may not eat of any fruit of the tree? So, 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 so uh, the serpent, which we know was the enemy, was Satan. Uh, was, was questioning her. She said, did God say you cannot eat? And she said, no, God did not say that we could not. He said we could eat. You know, she, he was trying to put a negative. Did God say you could not do something? That you could not eat of all the trees of the garden? He was trying to plant something in her head that God was holding something back from her. Did God say that you could not? No, no, God said I could, but except for that tree. See, God's holding something back from you. And then, then, of course, he lies and said, well, if you eat from the tree, you will not die, but you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so, see, God didn't want us as mankind, know, you know, having an understanding of good and evil. In other words, God wanted Adam and Eve to walk with them in a revelation of who God is. And God is love. You know, there's going to be a place in e eternity when we're going to be with God and there's going to be no evil. And I'm going to say, and that's the way God wants, you know, there was a place in eons of times before Lucifer fell that there was no evil. Think about that. Everything was perfect. Everything was perfect in heaven. Every, everything was good. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? And that's what God wants in our relationships. He doesn't want evil. He wants our relationships to be good. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? So, uh, so we're, I'm going to focus on, on words this morning. And words are the most powerful things in the universe. I like what it says in Proverbs 18, 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue... 
and those who love it will eat its fruit. And it's interesting the way it's written in Proverbs, and I've I said this before, but it's actually, you know, a lot of a lot of ministers quote it, life and death are in the power of tongue, but but it's actually written death and life. Or why? I think it's easy to be more negative than to be positive. I think it's more easy to see what's not happening than what is happening. Or you listen to what I'm saying to you. I think it's easy to speak the negative instead of the positive. And we, you know, there, yes, there might be a cloud out there, but, but always focus on the silver lining in the cloud. There might be a problem, but there is a promise of God's word that will trump the problem in our lives. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? So, 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 so we need to get a revelation of that, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. In other words, we will eat the fruit of our words. And I want to eat good and not bad. Amen? I, I like what it says in Genesis. It says here in Genesis 1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we're going to read 1 through 3. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. It's interesting to me when you read the account of Genesis, that, that in the account of Genesis, uh, it says that God said and he created. God said and he created. In other words, God creates everything by his spoken word. He says it, and he creates uh, uh, light, and light was. And what was interesting, that he creates everything good. God creates everything good. But, but he came to the earth, and it says it was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. Think about that. And, and when I think about that, some scholars believe that, that between you know, Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2, uh, that God originally created the earth good, but there was something that happened, which I believe was the fall of Satan. And he, when he fell, he came down on this earth and he caused the earth to be darkened. Amen? And then God recreated it. I got a revelation on this one time when I was reading it. God was revealing to us, you know, we're made from the earth. And he was revealing to us that a man without God is like the earth that God came to uh, without form and void and darkness. And a man without God is, is, is in a chaotic state. And we're formless and dark until the Holy Spirit of God starts hovering over us. Until somebody ministers the word of faith and, and, and life. And we receive Jesus and we come out of a chaotic state into a place where we're with God. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? In other words, light is coming into our lives. Hopefully as you're coming out on Sunday mornings, more light is coming into your lives. You're walking in more light than darkness. You're walking in more truth than lie. And you're walking in more freedom than curse. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? And, so, and so, so, so God said, let there be light. And I'm going to say this, that we can use our words to frame our families. We can speak light in a dark area in our lives. Do you believe that today? Whatever darkness it is, speak the light of God's promises of his word into the dark areas and that light will dispel the darkness. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what your family's going through. No, the light of God's word will dispel the darkness. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. I'm telling you, God is an awesome God. And he created us in his image. And you are a speaking spirit. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen or oh me? And so we need to learn to get a hold of our words. Amen. I, I like the faith principle in Romans 4, 17. It says, call those things that be not as though they were. In other words, we need to call into existence what may not be until it's there. In other words, this was taken from Abraham when he was 100 years of age and he did not have the promised child, Isaac, and God changed Abram's name to Abraham, a father of many nations, before he became the father of Isaac. 
God calls those things that be not as though they were. If you're going to change anything in your life, you need to start calling what God calls it. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In other words, you are redeemed this morning. Yes, you may have messed up, you may have failed, you may have missed it, you may have sinned, but you are the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let the weak say they're weak. No, there's no faith in that. I got up this morning and I must have said to myself, I'm tired. And I said it again, I'm tired. I must have said it five times. I'm tired. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody? And then, then I said, then I changed. I said, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then I got a cup of coffee. I'm strong in the Lord. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? In other words, we need to start lining up with God's word. Are you, that cup of coffee did help a little bit. I mean, I, glory to God. Th thank God for Starbucks. Hallelujah. Amen. And hopefully they will have one in heaven. But anyway, uh, but uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the weak say that they're strong. In other words, call life into that dark area in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. I like what it says in first Peter. How many people want to see some good days out here? How many? I, I don't know. I don't like evil days. I don't like bad days. I like good days. And it says, actually, it, it says in the word in first Peter 3 10, it says, for he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Let his lips, uh, his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil. Do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. So it says, if you want to see good day, refrain your tongue from evil. And you say, well, pastor, what do you mean by that? Well, listen, just talking negative is evil. You say, pastor, that's a... That's a little strong there. Listen, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul was, was revealing about how the Israelites, how they missed God in the desert. And he said one of the things they did was they complained and they were destroyed of the destroyer. Complaining was right, with, was right in line with sexual sins. Oh, my Lord Jesus. We think sexual sins, oh, man, that's bad. That's really bad. But you know, complaining can be really bad too. Amen. Amen. Oh, you listen to what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're focused on, you know, the negative. We're focused. Listen, when we're complaining, what we're doing in a sense, and now, now hold on to your seat, we're really exalting the devil. Oh, man, did I go there? We're saying the devil's bigger in our life. We're saying the devil's bigger in the situation. We're saying the devil's bigger. The giants are way too big. We cannot come into the promised land because the giants are too big. No, God is bigger than any giant in your life. God is bigger than your debt. God is bigger than, than whatever you're dealing with in your health issues. God is bigger. We got to exalt God. We got to raise, we got to focus on God. Amen. Listen, your words are so powerful. Jesus said that this in Matthew 12, 36 to 37. I, but I tell you, on the day of judgment, men will have to give an account for every idle, inoperative, non working word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified and acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned and sentenced. Think about that. Jesus said every idle word, we're going to give an account in the day of judgment. What's an idle word? It's an unproductive word. It's, it's a non-working word. And our words will either condemn us or our words will uh, acquit us or justify us. Listen, your words got you into a relationship with God. Ooh, are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? And, and listen, listen, Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that, we use this scripture all the time for salvation. But it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. Think about this. We can choose our words to usher us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Our words can bring us into the kingdom of God's dear son's love. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? Your words are powerful. Your words can usher you in. It, it will give you salvation today. So let me just, let me say this. There, there are, let me give you seven key ways to communicate, to enhance your relationships, and to enhance your life. I'm going to try to get through these fairly quickly. Number one key uh, way in communication, number one, is that we need to give sincere praise to people. Find something positive to say. In other words, listen, the people don't take the praise that we give to God. God gets adoration. God gets our praise. But we need to find ways to give sincere praise to people. In other words, find something good about somebody and, 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 and reveal that to them. You know, uh, parents, find something good about your children and, and, and let the, your children know that they have something good about them. Don't just point out all their negative traits. Point out something good. Amen. Point out what they're strong in. Focus on their good strengths, their strong strengths, instead of their weaknesses. Amen. Why? Because, you, because that will bring encouragement into them. Find out something positive about your boss. Maybe your boss isn't too nice, but there's got to be something good. They hired you, right? But anyway, we'll continue. Find out something good. Proverbs 25, 11 says it this way. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and settings of silver. So, so we just need to, listen, I, I was reading a book and it was talking about, you know, put something in somebody's bucket. In other words, add value to people. Amen. Find something that you can, you, you can find something good in. Amen? Number two, we need to be more thankful in our words. In other words, we, we need to show our gratitude towards people and towards God. You know, I was, I was walking up here today, and I was thinking about this beautiful building that we're in. And I was walking up in the nice landscaping, and I was thinking, we're blessed. I said, thank you, God, for this building. Thank you, God, that we have a nice building in here and that we can do a service. And, and I just thank God. Amen. And we got to keep saying, if you want to expand the capacity of receiving more from God, develop an attitude of thankfulness. You know, in the book of Romans, the reason why people did not serve God, there's two reasons. They didn't acknowledge God in their life and they did not give God thanks. People of the world don't normally give God thanks, but people that are of God give God all the praise. Going to get an amen. amen. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything. Not for everything. Don't you, don't, you give thanks for the car accident, but you give thanks that you're able to walk away from the car accident. You don't give thanks for the for the disease that the doctor said that's in your body, but you give thanks for Jesus' stripes because you're healed. Yo, know, you listen to what I'm saying today. You don't give thanks for the negative, but you give thanks that God can bring you through the negative. He, listen, God either is going to deliver you from it or he's going to deliver you through it, but either way, he will deliver you. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? I love what it says in Psalms 107. Eight and nine. Oh, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Number three, if we're going to uh, have greater communication and enhanced relationships, we need to have uh, openly expressed affection. In other words, you know, I always know, we, listen, you need to just give somebody a hug today. You need to receive a hug today. I was noticing when people were coming in today, well, I'm telling you, I had one, uh, people would be coming. Uh, some of you get five hugs from us. I give you a hug. The greeter gives you a hug. Somebody else gives you a hug. You know, that's healthy. I was looking that up, and hugs will actually, it, it will, it will uh, give you more, uh, it, it, re it relieves your stress. There's a chemical in your body that's released just getting a hug. 
Are you listening to what I'm saying today? There are so many benefits in just receiving a hug or a touch from somebody. I, I was thinking about Jesus and, and Jesus actually says the way that we pray for people is that we're supposed to touch people and lay hands on the sick. In other words, we're supposed to give them a touch. And it's interesting in Matthew 8, 1, 3, uh, it says here, when, when he was come down from the mountain, talking about Jesus, great multitudes followed him, and behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus could have just spoke the word to him. But it says here, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. This is amazing to me that the leopards in that day, they were, they were uh, uh, excommunicated from, from the, the people. They were, they were in their own community, and, and they were segregated from the rest of the group, and they were, were, were considered unclean. And really, you weren't supposed to touch these people, but Jesus touched this leper. Jesus reached out with compassion. And he, 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 I'm sure he embraced that leper. And he said, I am willing, be cleansed. And I believe that leper was not only clean from his disease, but he felt the love of God through the touch of Jesus. You are the hands, you are the feet, you are the body of Jesus. Touch somebody today. Pray for somebody today. Reveal to them that God loves them. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's what we do. Number four, we need to give encouragement. We need to be those that, that give encouragement to others. In other words, be somebody's cheerleader today. Uh, do, do, you know, let them know that, that God is for them, that they're going to make it. Whoever you people you're dealing with, there's, every, there's lots of people dealing with discouragement these days. Find somebody discouraged. Listen, if you're down, find somebody that's downer, than, that's in a lower level than you, and start, start uh, encouraging them, and guess what will happen? You'll get encouraged. Amen. You're going to make it. And you start thinking, I'm going to make it too. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm telling you, preaching is the best therapy for Pastor David. I'm telling you, I, I preach it, but I, I, I got to believe it too. You know what I'm saying? And I got to live it. I'm, I'm preaching this message, and I'm one finger's at you, four fingers back at me. Amen. Like, glory to God, I need this myself. It says in Ephesians 4, 29 and 32, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up. So he says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out, but what is helpful for building others up according to their need, that, that it may benefit those who listen. Glory to God. John 16, 33, Jesus was talking about going back to heaven. He was talking about being crucified, and, and, and his disciples were a little nervous. And he says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer I have overcome the world. He was saying, I'm going to the cross, and I'm going to be beaten, and I'm going to die on the cross. They couldn't believe it. You know, they, they couldn't receive it. And I'm going to die on the cross, and I'm going, but, he, but Jesus was still saying, I'm a victor even in the cross. I'm a victor going to the cross because, it, listen, Friday may be a bad Friday, but Sunday's coming. You might have a bad day, but I'm telling you, your resurrection day is coming. God, are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? I'm telling you, be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world, and you can overcome this world. Number five, we need to walk in kindness. I wrote this down. People are fragile. Handle them with care. Our words and our actions can heal people or hurt people. Proverbs 51 says it this way, a soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stirs up anger. Amen. Romans 12 10 says it this way, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. That's a tall order. Ephesians 4 32, it says, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, Forgiven one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Remember what I said at the very beginning of this message? Love of God is giving and forgiving. If we're going to walk in the love of God, we're going to have to be givers and we're going to have to be forgivers. 
Are you listening to what I'm saying to you this morning? Number six, we need to speak the truth in love. You know, I, there, some people, and, I, and you hear some ministers preach that Jesus is grace. And, you know, that's nice. But, but Jesus is not, you know, the Bible doesn't actually say that. Jesus is love, I would say that. But, but, but Jesus is the word, he's love. But Jesus is not just grace, he is grace and truth. Jesus, in John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. In other words, sometimes when you're, when, when you're speaking truth, you need to speak, you need to allow that love to permeate the truth. Amen? Are you hear what I'm saying? Truth without grace is mean. Amen. Grace without truth is meaningless. Amen. Truth and grace is medicine. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? Jesus, when, when that lady was, when, uh, that was thrown before him, that was caught in adultery, you know, Jesus did not, you know, Jesus said, he that has no sin, throw the first stone. And Jesus could have condemned her. And he said, where's your accusers? And she looked up, no one was there. And he says, neither I condemn you. In other words, Jesus was given grace. Then Jesus says one more thing, go and sin no more. He gave truth. He gave grace, forgiveness, but he also get, said to her, sin no more. He said that to another man that he healed, and, and he found that man, and he said to that man, you know, God has healed you, but sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. Are you listening? Grace and truth. Grace and truth. Number seven, be a person of prayer. I'm telling you, listen, look for opportunities to pray for people. Look for opportunities if you're with, with your spouse to pray when there's, when there's when turmoil in there, when, when there's confusion. You need to pray. Amen. That's the time that you need to get God's wisdom in the relationship. That's what, listen, when, when you're dealing with anger issues, pray. I remember I was, I, I almost got in a fight with somebody at work, myself, years back, and that person wanted to get in a fight with me. And, uh, and I, I could feel the anger rising up, and they were getting in my face. And I was like, I, my, my hands started clenching. Are you, are, anybody know what I'm talking about here? Anybody been there? And my hands started clenching, and then I started shaking a little bit. What was that? Anger. <laughs> It rises up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then I finally had to get away. I went into the bathroom and I started praying. And I prayed in the spirit. And pretty soon that feeling of anger just lifted off of me. And I had no anger or, or with that person. I knew it, what, my, my fight wasn't against a person. My fight was against the devil. My fight, in other words, the enemy was working. And this guy was a brother in the Lord. This guy was a Christian. Devils, the, the devil can use Christians. The devil, Christians can yield to the devil. Why, Pastor? Now, I don't believe that. Uh, Peter did. When Peter, when Peter said, Jesus, you're the Son of God. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Bajoni, that flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father is in heaven. You're blessed. And then Jesus said, well, I'm going to the cross. And Peter said, you can't go to the cross. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Peter. He yielded, Peter yielded to the Spirit of God one moment and then yielded to the enemy the next moment. Can we do the same? Yes, we can. But thank God that greater, somebody say greater, greater. is Jesus that is in me than he, the devil, that is in the world. God is leading us and guiding us into all truth. As long as we keep walking in the love of God, we walk in love towards God by obeying his commands. We walk in love towards people, amen, because they're made in God's image. And when we walk in love towards God and people, I'm telling you, your life is going to take off. Your life's going to be exactly what God called it to be. It's going to be a blessed life. You're going to have blessed days. Do you believe it today? Have you received it today let's go in prayer father i just thank you for your mercies and for your goodness and for your love and i thank you for these keys lord and we're going to endeavor to walk in these keys father and father i just thank you for every person in this room every person watching online this morning and father i just thank you and perhaps they've never experienced your love 
And you, they can experience, you can experience the love of God if you're in here this morning. And how do you do that? By receiving Jesus, the love child of God. And as you receive Jesus, the love of God will come into your life. So if you're ready to receive that love this morning and you've never made a confession of your faith, just pray this prayer after me and mean in your heart. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead for my justification. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen.